Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. I'm sure many of you are starting to smell it, the stinky feet in the bee yard. And I was for sure, for sure that I was going to be able to prove that Aster is the culprit of the stinky feet smell and not the goldenrod. But turns out, um, my aster blooms right about the time my bees start working the goldenrod. So I wasn't able to decipher whether the smell was goldenrod or aster. What's your opinion? Leave it down below. Boy, I really, really thought this year I seen all the goldenrod starting to bloom. It was opening up. There was no blooms on the aster. And you remember a couple weeks ago I mentioned that my bees were still in a darth and I had to feed. Well, since the goldenrod has attracted the bees, the bees are working it rather profusely, and at the same time that the bees have started to work the goldenrod, the aster has also started to bloom. So, it's kind of discouraging because I was really hoping to get a little bit of goldenrod flow before the aster opened up to decipher if the smell was the goldenrod, but that didn't happen for me. I guess looking back over, you know, 11 years of keeping bees, um, I think about my goldenrod flow, and for some reason, um, I guess I must have a late variety of goldenrod, but uh, for some reason, um, my bees do not work the goldenrod until like all of it in my area is in bloom. It doesn't matter if 75, 85, 90% of it's in bloom, they just ignore it. And that's why I had to feed a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know why that is. It must not be producing nectar at that point. But man, I think back a couple weeks ago, it didn't look any different than it does behind me. Um, the goldenrod was all flowered out, fully flowered out. And if I was a bee, it would have attracted me, I'd think, but maybe not. Um, must not be producing nectar at that point. Must take it a couple weeks. Um, I know I had a lot of people in that uh, video where I had to feed mention that maybe you need some rain, but that isn't the case. Um, two weeks ago, I believe it was about two weeks ago, on a Monday evening, um, we got three and a half inches of rain in one night. And uh, sure, we were going through a dry spell, but that stopped about a month ago. And we've had some decent rains. And uh, so I can't say that I believe the goldenrod was lacking rainfall. I just think that maybe it's a later variety and that's the reason it attracts the bees so late in the season. Um, I know I see people all over uh, bee groups that I'm in posting my bees are on are working the goldenrod and I'm like, what the heck, mine aren't even touching it. But anyway, it is what it is. I'd love to hear your uh, opinion on uh, what you think. Is it aster or is it goldenrod that's causing the stinky feet smell? Leave that down below. Um, what I want to like to do today is we're going to take a walk around here in a couple minutes and I'm going to show you just a few of the different asters that we have here on the farm. Now you can probably see some of this white aster here behind me. And this one here is actually called Lady in Black. And we'll take a closer look at it here in a second along with a few other varieties. But what I'd like to do now, um, before we get to the aster, um, is talk about the staghorn sumac mite treatment. I've had a lot of people ask me in the last few weeks, hey, what happened to your follow-up video on the sumac? Well, I'll tell you what happened. For some reason, and I don't know, um, for some reason, the sumac that I get my berries for from to, uh, to do these mite treatments, for some reason, didn't produce any berries at all last year. They were just leaves no berries and i don't know why that is because you know i have bees that would be pollinating the tree but for some reason no berries so with no berries i had nothing to do a follow-up video with um, this year though sumac is in full berries and i will be harvesting them very soon uh, once they dry out a little more and you can look for that video next year i apologize for the delay but working with nature, and you know how that is, doesn't always work the way we want it to. 
I'd also like to touch real quick on the tubed entrances. Um, if you remember, I've been experimenting all year with tubed entrances to see if they help reduce small hive beetles getting into the hive. And yes, the answer is yes. They did a terrific job of preventing the hive beetles from getting in. There is a few tricks to it though. You gotta make sure there's no other holes in the hive. Um, hive bodies with busted corners or anything like that where a beetle can sneak in. Um, the downside to the tubed entrance, if you use a smaller one like I did, um, after the population in the colony picks up, um, bees kind of struggle to get in that hole. There's just so many trying to get in there at once and they're packed with pollen and makes things kind of difficult. So I think next year what I'd like to do is go from something about that big around to maybe that big around. And also if you remember on my tubed entrances, they're a couple inches long. There's really no reason for it to be that long. So I could shorten it and that would uh, help the traffic inside the tube also because there would be less of a span for them to walk through. So yes, they did help. And yes, I will continue to experiment with them. But uh, one thing I'd like to throw out here, uh, if you got a small hive beetle problem, make sure you check out controlling small hive beetles with nematodes. I just released that last week and there has been a study found by the University of Georgia that shows its effectiveness and it's like if I remember off the top of my head it's like 88 to 94 percent um, so they're very very effective I'll link that up here in the corner if you haven't seen that and I highly suggest you check into that so what I ended up doing with the tubed entrances midsummer was I pulled them out because the colonies got strong and uh, I just let them go in the hole where the tube was that worked out rather well now we're getting into fall, robbing's starting to become an issue. I have put all the tubes back in, kind of restricts the flow, but it helps with the robbing and it seemed to help with the hive beetles. So that's my little rundown on the tubed entrances. If you have any more questions, I welcome you to leave them down below. Now let's take a little walk right through here and see what kind of asters we can find. To start off our asters, this is probably the most common one in my area. And I identify all of my asters by the color of the flower and the color of the button. That might not be the correct way, but it's the easiest way for me to identify them. So what we've got here is a small white flower with a little tiny yellow button in the center. And as you can see, each plant produces a mass amount of uh, flowers. It's just totally covered in flowers. Now, right now, I don't see a single bee or pollinator on this. Um, I don't know the reason. Maybe it's like the goldenrod and it has to be in bloom for so long. Um, maybe they're more attracted to the goldenrod that's in bloom. I'm not sure. But I do know the bees do love this uh, variety of aster. So this aster closely resembles the one that I just showed you. There's one slight difference. If we look at this aster, you can see that they're very, very tiny little flowers. And you're also going to notice that the center button in the flower is pink. This strain of aster or variety is called Lady in Black. It's one of the few asters that I do know. Um, lots of tiny flowers and the bees do love them just as much as the variety I showed you first. So there you go, Lady in Black. Um, one easy way to identify it is the pink button in the center of the flower. Okay, so this is a purple aster. Um, I do not know the exact name of it. I do know that the bees and all pollinators do love it. Um, if we look at this flower, you're going to notice it's a lot bigger than the previous aster flowers. It does have uh, yellow buttons. and it also has a few pink buttons and a light purple flower. Very, very pretty. This is probably in the top of my favorites of the asters. This one that we're looking at here is a New England aster. It's actually called Purple Dome. And this one would be right up there as number one for me. I really like this one. It's a very pretty flower. Um, 
it's a lot deeper, darker purple than the lighter purple aster that I showed you just a couple seconds ago. And the bees do greatly love this aster as well. So you can see how there is a wide spectrum of different asters that grow. And normally, all of them grow right along with goldenrod. You see we got a small patch of goldenrod here. And if we look, we've got the yellow button. We've got the purple dome I just showed you. And some more yellow button mixed in here. Oh, and here's some lady in black. Noted by the pink button in the center of the flower. So keep an eye open, folks, and see what your bees are working. I uh, won't be surprised if you have several varieties growing um, just like I do. Look here. There's a purple dome. Very pretty. At one time, this whole area right through here all used to be purple dome. But uh, since we're organic, I try to keep this mode because it's under the power line and that's why the power company keeps spraying. So I had to mow it, therefore it cut all the purple dome out of the scenario or as much as we used to have anyway. We still have little bits. So with all of these sources of fall nectar comes a new source of fall pollen. And you're going to see lots of different colors coming into the hive. The orange, that would be your goldenrod. Any lighter color, I'd have to say that's probably an aster. So make sure you take some time and enjoy your bees. Watch them come back to the colony. See what kind of nectar source they're working at just by judging the pollen on their legs. If you enjoyed this video folks please take a minute and give me a big thumbs up that'll help boost it in the youtube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find if you haven't subscribed please take time to do so and make sure you click on that little bell so you can be notified when i release new videos i'd like to take a second now and invite you over to my patreon page and help support the content that i bring to you every week and I'd like to throw a huge shout out to my current Patreons for doing what they do. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have these weekly videos. So thanks a lot. Much appreciated. Thanks for watching. JC's Bees. <laughs>